next show is Upstairs at O'Neill's, oh, yeah. which was a charming off-Broadway review that ran for 308 performances in 1982. The show played a venue called O'Neill's on 43rd Street, which was crafted specifically for the show. It is currently Tony's Denapoli. Know where that is. The review featured five cast members, including B.B. Newworth and Mishan Peacock, and was put together by Martin Sharnan. According to Off-Broadway Musicals by Thomas Hishak, it was a review without an agenda, a throwback to reviews prior to the late 1960s. Upstairs at O'Neill's was rather theater insidery. One number was called Talkin' Morosco Blues, a Bob Dylan-style protest song about the demolition of Broadway theaters. There was also stools poking fun at review staging, and soap operetta, where soap operas met Gilbert and Sullivan. In one song, the mothers of all of the New York theater critics, referred to in the song as only Clive, Mel, John, and Frank, talked through a matinee, revealing that they were ashamed of their sons because their favorite shows were 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue, Mata Hari, Via Galactica, and Oh Brother. That actually exists. Like, I didn't make that up for this concert. That's a song. In a New York Times feature about the show, B.B. Newworth declared herself a dancer who acts and sings. And when one of the other performers talked about putting together a cabaret act, she said she would want to do that. Singing and acting have gotten me jobs, but I care more about going to ballet class. She was only 24 years old. A column in the Times pointed out the next song as the number that stopped the show each night. Written by Douglas Bernstein and Dennis Markell, and performed originally by Markell. Here to sing something, welcome Zachary Prince. <laughs> and um, they were all flops, so um, these are my people. So, <laughs> um, if you get a program when you exit, instead of listing everyone's, like, uh, all their career facts, we just list one fact about an underappreciated musical. So you didn't know Zach made his Broadway debut in Baby It's You, which you can learn in the program if you get one outside. <laughs> My name is Murray Karp. Maybe you heard of me. I used to teach Drama One at the High School of the Performing Arts. So, it was the first day of class and I was so excited. I had everyone in the auditorium and I told them to come up on stage to do this simple improvisation about the no. They're all doing great, except for this one little girl, Morales, who's just sitting there. Every day, for a week, all the students got the message, felt the motion, every book. Every kid was alert and involved, except Morales. She just sat there like a lump. I said, do something. Please just do something. If you would try it, you'd really do it well. You're probably nervous. Do you speak English? You've got lots of real potential, I can tell. So I made it even easier. I said, just pretend to be something. A, a table. Anything. It's really very easy. She couldn't even do that. So I gave her all this individual attention. I, I told her to try it alone. She just stood there. Second week, we went on and the kids showed such improvement. Did their homework. Really cared. Everyone did as well as they could, which is what's important, not Morales. She just stared. I said, say something. Oh, God, say something. Uh, this class can't help you. You might be wasting time. Go see Miss Roney. They're making puppets. Or even better, Mrs. Schiff. She teaches mine. But she would leave 
So I asked her, what's the problem? She said, I just don't feel it. I said, well, come on, this is only exercises. I'm not saying you are on a bobsled. Just imagine you're on a bobsled. She said, we don't have bobsleds in San Juan. I said, oh, come on, don't give me this ethnic guilt trip crap. I mean, Gonzalez was a great bobsled, and Ramirez was the best table I've seen in 25 years! <laughs> Jesus Christ. So depressed, got a shrink, and I begged him, Doctor, help me. Could you maybe please explain? There's this girl in my course, and she gives me indigestion, palpitations, such a pain. He said, do something, you must do something. You should retire before you pay the price. He told me, Marie, this girl is serious, and she will kill you if you don't take my advice. But did I listen? No! By the time she quit the course, it was too late. The damage had been done. Six months later, I got real sick and died. <laughs> Morales stood above my grave and cried. Two-faced little bitch. <laughs> so anyway, I'm talking to Buzz Lee, Busby Berkeley the other day, and he tells me after losing out on every audition, Morales meets Michael Bennett and tells him the whole story. He puts it in a show, and everybody hears what a terrible guy I was. Wouldn't you know it? She gets hot, the fans beg her to sign. <laughs> she gets a seat on opening night of nine. <laughs> she gets to play the Y with Julie Stein. <laughs> she gets to go on dates with Calvin and Kevin and Robert and Stuart Klein. <laughs> and worst of all, she gets a monthly check from Chorus Line, and I get nothing.